Hi guys, in this video, I want to go to the absolute basics and ask myself, what is probability? What is statistics? Uh, what is machine learning, AI, artificial intelligence? How are they all connected? Or at least I want to present to you how I, someone who hopefully is about to finish his master's in statistics soon, how I understand these topics. Before we get to probability, we have to first explain what is randomness. So in our lives, we have a lot of uncertainty about just about everything. So what time will the bus arrive? What stock should I invest in? Should I study statistics, computer science, something else? What time should I leave uh, the, the house in order to avoid traffic jam? Should I marry John or Peter? Should the US respond to the war in Ukraine in this way or in another way. There's a lot of uncertainty about how things uh, should go and what decisions to make uh, in order to uh, optimize our objectives, to optimize what we are wanting to get from life. And the reason for this uncertainty is that our lives are um, basically governed by this thing called randomness. We, we don't see about everything, this complete structure of it, and a, are able to predict completely accurately how our actions will affect our, our future and our goals for the future. So we cannot know everything and we cannot predict the future exactly. And an interesting philosophical question is, does randomness actually exist? So what I mean by that is it's actually a part of nature. Is it an inherent property of nature or just a manifestation of our own ignorance? So um, a nice thought experiment is to think about flipping a coin, right? So assuming that the coin is fair and it has a 50-50% uh, probability of falling heads or tails, we usually think of it as a random event, right? We will flip a coin and it's with random probability will either be heads or tails. But maybe this word we use, randomness, is just a big word to cover up our ignorance, right? So if we knew everything perfectly, if we knew the exact shape of the coin to a microscopic level, if we knew the exact weight of the coin, the exact force exerted on the coin, the uh, environmental conditions, the gravity, the wind, etc. We could take all this information, we could calculate all of this in, and maybe we can predict accurately or almost accurately uh, the result of the coin. And then we won't say that this is random. This, we could actually maybe even, if the way that we exert a force on the coin you know, it can change, maybe we build a machine that does it exactly the same. And so we can even decide that when we flip the coin this time, it will be heads. And when we flip the coin another time, it will be tails. So we can take away all the randomness from the coin and make it a complete deterministic uh, event. And I think quantum physics kind of seems to suggest that randomness may actually exist. I'm not a physicist. So if there are any physicists in the audience that want to correct me in the comments, please do so. But even with that, I'm not exactly 100% convinced because I think the most it can say is that based on our understanding and our perception of reality, there seems to be randomness, but it doesn't exclude the possibility that our perception is limited. And maybe there is some hidden information in some other dimensions that we don't see, and we don't uh, not only see, but we don't uh, observe in any uh, way uh, that might, if we took that into consideration, there won't be any more randomness. In any case, probability is a way to kind of quantify all this uncertainty and give it more structure. And why we want this? Well, it could help us. It could help us make better decisions uh, in our lives. And so the first way to start giving it some structure is first translate everything into the mathematical language, yeah? Translate it to mathematics, give it zero, one, et cetera. And then try come up with some questions to help us uh, classify the uncertainty better. So for example, some easy question we can start with is, do the events only get positive outcomes or can 
there also be negative outcomes. So for example, if I uh, measure the number of cars passing in a highway in one hour, this is only non-negative. It can't be that there are minus two cars passing. But if I'm looking at the change in price of a stock within a certain time frame, this can be both positive and negative. Another thing is, is it continuous or discrete? The number of cars is discrete. There can be uh, no pi cars, no 1.22222 cars. It can either be 0, 1, 2, et cetera. It's uh, basically countable, uh, countable infinite. It could be that you know, practically it's not infinite, but for all uh, practical purposes, we can model it with, a, with countable infinite. Uh, but for example, the exact height or weight of a person is continuous, uh, again, for all practical purposes. In reality, we can only measure it to up to some accuracy, but, but um, for all practical purposes, we can uh, think of it as continuous. The next set of questions we could ask re are regarding what is called the moments of uh, this uncertainty. Yeah? We can ask, what is the most common value? And it's called the mode, right? And what is the average? What is the mean uh, value? And how are they different? Are they the same? Are they, the mean is larger than the mode? It's smaller than the mode? What is the median? What is the value that 50% of the cases uh, are less than and 50% of the cases are more than? Uh, how spread out are the events, which is called in statistics the variance? Um, how symmetric are the events? How likely uh, is it to get distant events, events that are distant from the mean? How likely are they? Are, is it, are they very, very rare or are they not so rare? The next stage is coming up with what is called distributions. So these are like mathematical models that really pinpoint uh, almost everything we need to know about the uncertainty. And these distributions have more characteristics. They have certain ways that you can uh, look at the uncertainty. You can look at it uh, on the PDFs, the probability density functions, or PMFs, probability mass function. You can look at the CDF, the cumulative uh, distribution function, et cetera, et cetera. And you might ask yourself, well, why do I need all of this? Why do I need to structure uh, the uncertainty? Well, it could be just for simple curiosity. But it could be most likely is that we all want to advance in life, you know, get ahead in life. And the more insight we have into the nature of this uncertainty, uh, the better decisions we can make. OK, so this whole thing was probability. But probability is basically this theoretical way to quantify randomness. Usually we are interested in real world events, right? It's usually not that we are thinking theoretically about some possible ways that uncertainty can manifest itself. And then we are coming to nature and say, oh yes, this is how this kind of events, they fit this theoretical thing I thought about before. No, usually it's the other way around. We are looking at nature and we are taking at, at the empirical data that we see from nature and we are trying to fit to it some approximated uh, model, some probabilistic model that we think can capture uh, this behavior of this process that we see in nature the best. So statistics is all about this coupling and joining of empirical data with the uh, probabilistic models together. Uh, so basically, you don't have statistics if you don't have data. Uh, I would say another name for statistics will be data fitting. Um, and you might ask yourself, well, why do I even need probability? I have the data. If I have the data, I should just look at the data and see everything I need, right? Well, it's not that easy because usually we don't have the complete data. We only have a sample. We have, we have a limited number of observations. If we had the complete data, then maybe we wouldn't talk about probability. Maybe we wouldn't need probability and statistics. Everything we need to know is in the data. Let's just look at the data. What is usually the case is that we have incomplete data. And from this incomplete data, we are trying to make decisions about new data, about the future, right? We have some incomplete data about what happens in the past, and we are trying to make a prediction about what will happen in the future. So to summarize it, data is always limited. It sometimes could be that it's just hard to collect more data. And most cases, uh, we don't have time or uh, money or resources 
to collect more a lot of time because we have to make decisions now, right? We can't wait infinitely long and collect infinitely amount of data. Uh, we have to make the decision by the deadline, by uh, the end of the day, say. And so using data allows us to gain insight about the nature of the process that we are studying and make decisions. Now, there can also be an opposite problem. It could be that we have too much data. It could be that we have a data overload and uh, it's becoming harder and harder to find a needle in the haystack. And this is another problem. And another question is how do we even collect the data? So it could be that I'm collecting the data, but I'm collecting it wrong in a way that doesn't really give me more insight into the problem. And it actually misleads me completely. And there are good ways and bad ways to collect the data. And so uh, statistics is all about everything that is related to data. It's how we collect the data, how we process the data, how we visualize the data. And, but in its core, it's how we take that data and uh, gain insight from it uh, to the future. And the next step is once we uh, have the data and we you know, fitted it to the uncertainty, we now have some model of uncertainty about the future and we can now use it to make decisions, right? We can set up some decision rules uh, and we can make, set them up in different ways, either to minimize our loss, maximize our profit, basically optimize some objective function that we have. And an example of this could be, uh, should I take an umbrella today when I go outside or shouldn't I? So um, we might have a model and it, uh, the model after I observed the data and took everything into consideration gives me some probability of rain uh, today. And it could be that I set up a decision rule that above 50% probability, I will take an umbrella and below this, I won't take an umbrella. And it could be that I'm more concerned about a false positive uh, than a false negative. Yeah, I, I, I raise it to 80% uh, probability because I really hate carrying a, an umbrella it's re and I don't mind so much getting wet. Yeah, so if I, if I leave it at 50% and uh, the model gives me a 65% and I decide, okay, it's above 50%, so I take an umbrella, I, I really hate it when I'm taking an umbrella and it uh, in the end turns out to be that it's not raining. So I will, I, I will just, I rather that it's going up to 85%, okay? So that I really don't have to carry umbrellas without it actually raining. It could be the other way around, right? It could be that I'm really, uh, I don't mind taking an umbrella even when it doesn't rain, but I really hate when I don't take an umbrella and it rains. And then I, I'm more concerned with the false negative when the model says it's not going to rain, but then it actually rains. This is one example. There are other examples, for example, how many sizes of shirts should my store hold in its uh, stock, right? And uh, how many from each type? If I think that most people are from medium to large or extra large, I will keep these sizes and I won't keep so much small and not so much uh, extra, extra large. But it could be that after I uh, see the people that come, I realize, oh no, I ordered too little of small, too much of extra large, etc. cetera. Uh, what time should I leave the house uh, not to get in, stuck in traffic? And so these kinds of decisions, we are making them all the time without really doing any rigorous statistics. Yeah, it's just our brain is doing the statistics for us. Um, proper statistics uh, usually come into play when there are major decisions and they are taken by uh, corporates and uh, governments, et cetera. These decisions can also be on new data that constantly comes. So for example, an, an email could come and I uh, trying to think, okay, based on the topic, is it spam or not spam? And I have a model and it gives me the probability that it's spam and it gives me the probability that it's not spam. And now I have to make a decision. I set up a decision rule and I decide. But the big question is, why should we make the decisions, right? I mean, we can just set up a decision rule and then have the machine, the, the, the model, the system uh, take the decision for us. So this new field uh, that emerged in the last 40 years or so, mostly in computer science, uh, is called machine learning. And this lets the machines make the decision for us. We are teaching the machines how to make the decisions and then we let them do the, take the decisions for us. Usually it's in a way that we can still have some control over it. So for example, 
with mail, usually what the spam classifier in mail do, they uh, put the mail that they think is spam in the spam folder, but you still have access to go into it and look at it and say, oh no, this is actually not spam and take it out of the spam. And sometimes they also miss some things that are spam and you help it, you mark certain mails and you say, this is spam. And then this is new data for the system that it can use to better learn for next time. When these systems are complex enough where they exhibit human-like behavior, then usually this is when we call it uh, AI, artificial intelligence. So if uh, the system is a self-driving car or some text recognition app like Siri or Alexa, where you say, hey Siri, call my mom and it does it for you, or it can play chess really well or play Go really well, then we say, oh, it acts like a human, it's, it's an artificial intelligence. And so this is how I see how all these things are connected. I just want to give out a disclaimer that this is by nowhere cover all of the delicate intricacies of probability, statistics, machine learning, and AI. These are vast fields with a lot of different goals and different uses. And also these divisions into different fields are somewhat arbitrary and they might change with time in the future. The, the names might change, et cetera. Still, I hope that this video kind of helped you uh, get some understanding of how are these fields connected and what is the basic objective of each of these fields uh, on its own. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I see you in the next one.